Hi. Hola. Hi, here is Mr. Dose. This is Michael Bradley. Hey, I'm Memphis. Hey. Hola. Hello. I'm here with Soccer.com. 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 And I'm talking with my friends at Soccer.com. See you soon. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my first impressions plus on feet video of the brand new Nike Hypervenom Fatal 3 DF in the launch colorway, which of course is the Radiation Flare Pack. Now this is the first takedown model in the new Hypervenom lineup, bearing a retail price of $170, which is pretty steep for a takedown. It's really trending towards high end versus low end. But with that said, this does maintain some pretty interesting tech specs and have some features that we have only seen previously on high-end Hypervenom Phantom models from previous generations. There's some variation to these materials, but it is something that is trending more towards a high-end shoe versus a takedown lower quality budget item. And of course, it doesn't necessarily have a budget price. It maintains the same retail as the Fatal 2 DF, the previous generation version, but definitely is a lot higher quality in my opinion, which is definitely a good thing. So if you wanna learn more about this shoe in general, that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Stick around, watch the entire thing. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. We will be able to pick these up below their normal $170 retail price. So in regards to the actual tech specifications on this shoe, what you're gonna find is that the shoe itself is a Nike skin material. The majority of the upper is what's labeled as Nike skin. Now Nike skin isn't actually a material for the actual upper. It's simply the top layer of polyurethane that covers what's beneath it. So what you're getting on this shoe is a mesh based synthetic with a polyurethane top layer. You're gonna find Nike skin listed in the tech specs for the Flyknit models, including the Phantom 3. That doesn't mean it has a Nike skin upper, it just means it has a polyurethane top layer protecting what's ev whatever is underneath. So that's what's going on here in regards to the branding. With that being said, a lot of people are kind of confused that this is the same material that we saw on the Phantom 1 and the second variations of the Phantom 2 and finish models. That's not entirely the case. You're getting a mesh based synthetic, which as you guys can see by the pattern is more of a diamond shape versus having that kind of honeycomb mesh base that we saw on previous Phantom models. Instead, with this material, it's a much more consistent thickness. There is a minimal texturing to it, but not quite as significant as what you found on the original Nike Skin Upper found on the Phantom 1. So instead, you're getting what I think feels a little bit more padded and just a little bit thicker in general. Not to mention that you do have a kind of standard soccer shoe lining on the inside that is there to add structure for the most part. And it does add thickness and bulk to the material as well. Kind of taking away from, I guess, the premium vibe that the shoe would otherwise have without it. But I'm sure it's there for a reason. With that being said, the material itself is very malleable. It's super flexible, super soft out of the box. Although it does feel a lot stiffer on feet which I'll talk about a little bit later in the video. Now running through the middle of the shoe where the laces are positioned and of course extending into the collar, you have a knitted material. Now this material is technically not fly knit, although it feels very, very similar to fly knit. What we've previously seen on mid cut takedown models from Nike is the knitted material that just feels kind of cheap in comparison to the higher quality fly knit material found on the most expensive models from Nike. But this honestly, feels a lot more premium, a definite improvement over any of the other mid-cut models on offer from Nike, either in the past or as of right now. And I guess unless you have this shoe and the Phantom 3 DF side by side, you're really not gonna notice a difference in quality with the actual knitted material itself, which is a good thing. Now obviously, because you're combining this Nike skin mesh with this knitted material, you have to have some kind of a fuse point, which there is running through the middle of the shoe, basically just where the lace holes or the actual flywire cables are positioned, but they've done the transition pretty seamlessly. It doesn't have overlapping points like we found on the Phantom 3, as well as the Fatal, sorry, on the Phantom 2, as well as the Fatal 2 DF. This has more of a seamless design, kind of like what you'll find on the Phantom 3, but it doesn't feel quite as seamless because obviously it is two different materials as opposed to just being entirely knitted. Uh, and of course that extends into the collar. So you do have the dynamic fit collar, hence the DF name to this particular model. And it does have the new collar design for the Phantom 3, where you have the higher side on the medial side and the lower side on the lateral side. Does this actually impact performance in any way at all? 
No, you don't really notice the collar when you're actually playing in the shoes, especially once you've worn them a couple times. It's something you stop noticing entirely. And again, it's just a big misconception that there's any performance benefit to what is essentially just an extension piece of material attached to what would otherwise be a low cut shoe. Speaking of a low cut shoe, this is as of right now the only variation of the Fatal on offer. There's definitely possibility for a Fatal 3 low cut to come out with future colorways, but as of right now, the launch radiation flare pack only the DF model is available, and I would assume that if a low cut Fatal 2 were to come out, it would include the same upper, it would include the same kind of mesh based material running through the middle of the shoe, but it would be of course low cut and perhaps retail at a lower price than $170, which would make it perhaps a better value. But again, only time will tell to see if that shoe actually exists or not. Now, in regards to other features on the upper, you're gonna find a flywire lacing system, which is to a certain extent a carryover from what you'll find from the higher end models. And something we've really not seen before all that often from Nike with their takedown models, you got it with the Fatal 2 DF, but because of how firm that synthetic was, it's not something that you could actually feel within the upper. It provided structure, sure, but it wasn't super noticeable. With this shoe, you have flywire cables, you can actually see it kind of peeking through the upper that run through the upper itself, they run from the base of the sole into the actual lacing system. Laces are attached to the shoe by way of these flywire cables. But unlike the Phantom 3, they don't necessarily crisscross at the end. They kind of come out together in a straight line, which doesn't necessarily feel different, but it arguably doesn't look as cool as what you'll get from the flywire cables on the Phantom 3. With that being said, it's still very, very effective in terms of securing your foot in place. You definitely do notice section by section as you pull the laces tight, when tension is put on those cables, it really does secure the upper on your shoe and give you that nice locked in responsive sensation. So for those that are gonna ask if you can wear these without laces, go ahead, be my guest. You're gonna have these cables kind of sticking out and flopping all over the place. Uh, and you're gonna lose out on all the responsiveness and all of the lockdown that this shoe was designed to have because of the lacing system. So please keep that in mind. Wearing these without laces would quite simply just be a dumb thing to do. Uh, the other thing that's kind of quirky about this particular lacing system is the fact that Nike hasn't added the dual lace holes at the top. So instead the laces basically end one lace in position lower than what we've seen on previous uh, mid-cut models from Nike. Kind of an interesting choice, something that I'm personally not too crazy about. I would have liked to have seen it go one position higher just to allow for as good of a lockdown sensation as you could possibly get. It doesn't feel bad without having that extra position, but it is something that is noticeably different on this shoe versus any of the mid-cut models that we've seen from Nike, either high-end or low-end, up until this point. The upper itself, being that it is a takedown model, does not feature ACC all conditions control. Please keep that in mind. The heel area, internal heel counter with a of course the little extension fins on either side that are directly attached to the actual sole plate itself. Internally you're going to find a smooth synthetic leather liner with a decent amount of padding although the fit in the heel does feel stiffer in general in comparison to the Phantom 3, something I'll talk about in just a second. The insole fully removable, I'll give you guys a quick look at that. It's essentially the same material as what you're going to find on uh, the Phantom 3 being this kind of ortholite spongy foam stuff. Um, decent thickness to it as well, so I really like the actual quality of the insole. It even has a little embossed texturing here in the forefoot area where you see these black graphics. It does have a mesh liner as well, but as you guys can see, it doesn't have the Nike Grip branding. That's because this is not a Nike Grip liner. With that being said, if you've seen any of my content on the Phantom 3 and Phantom 3 DF, you've noticed that I've covered that the Nike Grip liner really doesn't do anything. It doesn't feel different from a regular pair of insoles, so I wouldn't necessarily view that as a major downgrade with this shoe versus the Phantom 3. In regards to weight, the shoe itself weighs in at 7.2 ounces in a size 9 US, which comparatively, a Phantom 3 DF in the same size weighs in at a little bit less, 6.9 ounces or so. So it's a weight gain of 0.3 ounces, which is Honestly, very minimal. You're not gonna notice that all that much on your feet in regards to weight. The bigger difference between those two shoes is definitely just gonna be the way they feel and generally fit. So again, fairly lightweight shoes, which should be expected at the $170 price point, even though it is a takedown model. As far as the sole plate is concerned, you can see it does feature pretty much the exact same design as what you'll find on the Phantom 3. Not quite as premium looking in terms of the colors that they've used, it's just black in color, but it is not the same material. It's actually a kind of TPU plastic all the way through, which doesn't feel bad, but it doesn't feel quite as good as the 
um, nylon PBAX combination that you'll find on the high-end sole plate. You can definitely tell that they designed that sole plate around those two materials, the combination of those two materials, whereas when you just make it one solid TPU plastic material, it's not going to feel bad, but it doesn't necessarily have that same kind of natural bend and flexibility that you get from the Phantom 3 sole plate. So again, not quite as good as the top-end model, but to a certain extent, to be expected. Does not feel cheap though, which is important. As far as the sole plate is, con uh, the sub pattern, sorry, is concerned, you get the new hyper reactive stud pattern, which is consistent across the entire Hypervenom line. You get the Chevron Mercurial bladed studs on the lateral side, the hexagon shaped studs on the medial side, which pretty much perform and react like conical studs. And the end result is a stud pattern that actually does work quite well. You get plenty of bite and aggressive traction when making quick cuts and changes of direction. And you also get that freedom to kind of twist and pivot on the medial side studs that do have, like I said, more of a rounded shape to them. So it's kind of an evolution to a certain extent of what we got from the original Hypervenom stud pattern, but I definitely do prefer this. You get a little bit more studs under your feet, and I would say this just feels more stable and just offers more aggressive traction in general, which I definitely think is a good thing. Uh, that's pretty much it though in regards to tech specs and performance features. The only other thing to talk about is the look of the shoe. This of course being the Radiation Flare Pack. Uh, the look of the shoe, is pretty good, honestly. It's a takedown model, so it always runs the risk of looking cheap in comparison to the high-end shoe. And while I would argue that the high-end shoe does look more expensive, these do not look cheap, which is very, very important, especially if you're gonna spend $170 on them. So the colorway itself, I know not everybody's crazy about it. You get the electric green and volt yellow combination in terms of what's incorporated into this Nike skin upper. You can tell that the mesh base is volt yellow and then the nike skin top layer is kind of like a translucent tinged green color which is actually kind of a cool effect then you have the solid orange here on the medial side the orange and the green within the collar as well the black nike swooshes on the front and back of the shoe the flywire cables are orange on the lateral side and then volt yellow on the medial side so a little bit of accent there solid black sole plate and then some of the studs are volt yellow as well so again colorway aside i think that the shoe itself looks quite good but let me know your opinions down below in the comment section with all of that said let's take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet so you can see here on the right shoe i have a pair of neon yellow reflective sr4u replacement laces if you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com there'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description so if you're interested in a pair be sure to go ahead and check that out so in regards to tying them up, you can see that there is immediately tension put on those flywire cables, which you'll notice in terms of how the shoe tightens around your foot. They play a huge role in fastening your foot inside the shoe, providing all the lockdown and responsiveness that this design is supposed to provide. So tie the laces there. I'll put on the left shoe as well. One thing that I did notice immediately in comparison to the Phantom 3DF is that this is a little bit harder to get on just because you don't have quite as much elasticated section through the middle uh, and the nike skin material itself is just a little bit stiffer but getting them on not too bad you basically get your foot halfway in this is what i like to do and then get my thumb back here and make sure that i'm not putting any pressure on the back structured internal heel counter because if you do step down on that repeatedly it's possible that it could bend inwards and just cause you discomfort that you're not necessarily going to be able to fix so definitely avoid stepping on the heel of any shoe not just this one so tying them up pretty straightforward process you're able to get them effectively very very tight with this particular lacing system which i actually really like um, it's definitely grown on me very similar feel to that of the phantom 3 as well and that's what they look like on feet again the shoes fit well it does have a different feel in comparison to the flyknit phantom 3 upper this feels stiffer out of the box both because of the upper as well as the actual sole plate itself the heel construction does feel kind of more like the phantom 2 than the phantom 3 in that it's a little bit stiffer it's a little bit uncomfortable it does take some break in time but as long as you take things slow with the break in process you shouldn't have too many issues in regards to getting a nice comfortable fit the nike skin upper being that mesh base with having of course the polyurethane top layer is going to soften up after a few wears you'll get some stretch out of the upper in the toe box and forefoot area but for the most part it's going to maintain its shape pretty well um, which is good in regards to structure and responsiveness but i will say that this does seem to have a tighter fit and feel in comparison to the full flying at phantom 3 variation so uh, just keep that in mind as well i definitely do prefer the flying at upper on the higher end shoe but that shouldn't be too much of a surprise to pretty much anybody in regards to width it is a tighter fitting shoe as you would expect not quite as narrow as what you're going to get from the mercurials 
not quite as wide as what you're going to get from the Magistas or Tiempos. Kind of that middle ground, but a tighter fitting shoe nonetheless that I wouldn't necessarily recommend for really wide feet. But for the most part, as long as you don't mind a tighter fit, I think these will fit most people pretty comfortably. And in regards to sizing, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So that is pretty much it, guys, for my review of the Fatal 3 DF from Nike, the first takedown model in the new Hypervenom generation. If you're interested in a pair for yourself, you can click the little eye in the corner of the screen or the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. You'll be able to pick them up below their normal $170 retail price. If you have any questions regarding this shoe, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.